Missing Case File 291. Directed Energy Weapons. I'm Brig. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Pew, 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 pew. Your space laser's out. Oh, yeah. Get it's your time. Space lasers. It's time to uncover the truth. It's been pulled over everyone's eyes. Hey, Star Wars was a documentary. Death Star? It's real. It's up there. What do you oh, think yeah. the fucking moon is? 100%. Just wait. A giant That's fucking no moon. That's no it, moon. You know what it is? You know what it is? It's, it's, uh, it's ref- reflecting the sunlight into focused energy focused lasers. Laser Have you point. ever been wondering why we're having all these super moons and blue moons and red moons and blood it's moons? It's charging up. Right, it's charging up, right? There's been so many. It's like every every couple weeks. It changes colors just like a saying as they power up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been, all the talk, it's been all the talk of the internet uh, for a while, but primarily now since the Maui fires, the term directed energy weapon seems to be thrown at every everything. Everything is being incinerated <laughs> from laser weapons from either space drones ships well wherever and, and and i mean specifically we're talking about like you know the the maui fires and then uh we're talking the fires in Kelowna, and basically all summer i mean everyone was all fires everywhere was uh, canada was on fire uh what did we ever do to you know <laughs> to be the subject of all these directed energy attacks no, um canada but was did, on fire but it, and we don't we, we never hear it in the news but africa had also a record fire season. Just thousands yeah, and thousands of Africa's fires. Africa's always on fire. Just absolutely yeah. incinerated. And you never hear about it. And then you looked up active wild, wildfires and I looked at Africa. I was like, Jesus, the whole fucking thing is just on fire. Now, it, it did bring up like, I was kind of thinking about this before of like, you know, if if this technology is being used and I was like, I, I, I know the lot of the Maui stuff is like it's the elite the elite right they're the nwoers doing this but i'm like even if it was just like if you think about like how devastating uh, if you were a foreign say a foreign country and you had some sort of technology just to start a fire from space and you're just like hey this area has high winds and it's their heat season uh why don't we tie up a ton of their resources and money in having them fight forest fires and we're just gonna light a forest fire and you know, wham, bam, thank you, man. Like, lightning strike. Who knows, right? I mean, it's not. I was kind of thinking about that. Like, would that be used? Would would a foreign, would a foreign, uh, you know, nation kind of do that to each other? Especially so just like a slow bleed, as opposed to. I don't know. I like the idea of people in the shadows pulling the strings, trying to turn Lahaina and Kelowna into fifteen-minute cities. Yeah. Like that's way more <laughs> mysterious. Yeah, and Kelowna, Kelowna one really backfired on him because they didn't get, even get close. Yeah, because we were fucking ready. We were coordinated. Yeah. Unfortunately, wow. the the local Listen. government, just like government of Maui itself, seemed to be very underprepared for a severe forest fire. Is what it's wow. when, it, when you look at it, you're like Jesus. Well, I mean, like, can you blame them? That's not really a pl- like we are on fire every year. Every time this year, we are on fire. I know, but they ha- they've had many fires before, and just the road system. And have I've they? been I've been to Mount. Yeah, they have. Oh, not wow. obviously not. I like would us. never have thought like such a lush place so close to water would be. Well, they have an invasive in species of this grass that, if it doesn't get water like every day, turns brittle and bone dry. But I've been to Lahaina, and there's like it's pretty much one road in and out, north and south. So if something happened on one of those exits. Like, it's not like most of Hawaii, though. It's not like they're not like a bunch well, of roads. I've only been to Maui, like, so it's all like I can only. Yeah, it's mainly like a road around. And I do like Oahu. Couple... There's just like road that goes around, and then there's like one or two that cross like diagonally, and that's what it. I mean, so they're like, not, they're not get... prepared for that mass exodus, of evac- mass evacuation, like on a notice, like that. But now it's like it's, it's sad. If we're talking about 15 minute cities, like Kelowna's traffic is so fucking bad, I think everyone would welcome a 15 minute city rather than have to drive. It's over that 15 fucking minutes bridge. between lights everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, I, I don't think that's such a bad idea as they're painting out to be. Well, uh, for this one, for this week, I did something that I haven't done, and I don't know why I've never really thought of this. I didn't go on a lot of YouTube. I didn't go on a lot of Google. I went a lot of Rumble because I 
something clicked in me. I went, oh yeah, why would I look at YouTube where everything's heavily censored by the people that don't obviously want me to know about directed energy weapons when I can go on Rumble where there's fucking no rules and I can watch every kind of unhinged video uh, about directed energy weapons known to man. Um, some of my favorites is just this old guy uh, watching videos of lightning and he's just going, directed energy directed energy and then at the end he goes how many times am i gonna have to fucking come over to your house and clang your balls together so you know if you get that covid shot you're dead and then it goes directed energy weapons and then the video is ending and i i sat in my chair yeah and i was like holy shit you can get him for an interview coaster. What a roller coaster of a fucking we probably could. We could yeah, we get him for an interview. We should get him. Let's go. <laughs> Anyways, we've been like, we're talking about directed. Great. We're talking about directed energy weapons, but what that exactly is is a whole host of potential technologies ranging from ancient to modern Alien? lasers. Like there's there's it's and it's just like it seems to be a catch all phrase for just like something that is sci fi pretty much. They're shooting it from space. They're shooting. It's fucking except for the real. Lasers. These are they real. are, but there's a whole. There's so many of them. So exact. Let's start there. Let's start with why. What what are what's a directed energy weapon? Uh, so there is there is a legal definition of directed directed energy weapons because like it, like at least in the United States the uh, the United States Congress has, has to, had to define directed energy weapons like the use and development of it, uh, you know, in conjunction with like the U.S. military and things like that and their uses of like what is the appropriate use or what you can develop directed energy weapons to do. So there is like a framework for like what exactly it is. Um, but like you said, yeah, directed energy weapons, as far as what we're kind of going to cover, it's kind of just a lot of anything. So it's like pretty much in any sense, if you can project heat and into a point, then that's yeah, a directed direct energy weapon. Some sort of energy. Like a magnifying glass. With the sun going through it is directed, directed energy, energy weapons. Ants? That's yeah. a directed energy weapon. That's a, That's a fucking death ray. Weapon. That's a fucking you, death ray, yeah. Your yeah. buddy's sleeping? Your buddy's sleeping? You go up with an air horn, blare it right in his ear, he goes deaf? Directed energy. Directed energy weapon, oh, absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, yeah, so um, <laughs> it can be, yeah, it can be laser, uh, you know, related, where it's directed, you know, light and energy, and then it can be, yeah, like sonic, ultrasonic uh anything's like that electricity microwaves. for yeah microwaves uh any type of pretty yeah pretty much any type of one of those oral en types of energy so it's just yeah direct energy weapons a broad term <laughs> you know? yeah um boom but you, you don't like someone you punch them in the face boom directed energy directed energy <laughs> uh yeah for the and for this it's like we're mostly probably and most people recall when we did didn't we do it we did an episode on Nikola Tesla, right? And we talked yeah. about it. we yep. we eventually death touched ray. on his death ray, the Tesla death ray, the the infamous Tesla death ray, where he claimed that he could build um, a, a type of weapon that would be able to project some type of uh, radiation or beam that would be able to destroy aircraft and uh, entire armies and swathes, uh, and just be able to you know it would become the ultimate deterrent for war is kind of his idea. Never... It was it was like hit before the atomic bomb. It was yeah. his death ray that would be like I'm, I will give this technology to all nations and all nations will be able to destroy each other at any time. Therefore, there'll be no war. Yeah, never, uh, never exactly materialized that we know of. Um, and so, yeah, th that's kind of one of the more famous things. But if you go even go back further in history and you go back into even like mythology and folklore, you can find examples of what seem to be uh, or can be interpreted as directed energy weapons. Um, one of the ones that you uh, one of the more famous ones is, is everybody's like favorite Mythbusters episode is the one with Archimedes death mirror, like his. Uh, um people can you can look up the archimedes death mirror where is um uh it was t it's a type of weapon that it said like it, it's kind of part of legend um and also kind of a matter of historical debate of whether it actually existed or not um but the the tale comes from the siege of syracuse which is during the second punic war and so roman forces were actually trying to conquer the city state of syracuse so archimedes uh the famous greek mathematician and engineer was said to have developed the type of weapon uh that was going to be able to to like since the Romans had such a huge and overpowering Navy, like it was it developed. So it would like focus, like you take a number of bronze mirrors, like a large number of bronze mirrors, put them on a type of, you know, basically an array, uh, you know, on a 
kind of dish and then you would be able to focus the sun and you know manipulate that energy into being able to focus it over long distance and but he was he was fucking Roman ships was, ablaze it, before it they even set foot there. ships <laughs> from <laughs> before they could even get to close to land no are we are we sure we're scorching ship is it are we scorching ships or is it just like the equivalent of driving without sunglasses like what are we talking? <laughs> just blinding them. Yeah, like, uh, ah. and then you and then you run your ship just ashore. High beams, the super high yeah. beams, just ah. crash the nearest rock. Now, what was the what was the MythBusters on that? They said that they wouldn't have been able to do that. They weren't they weren't exactly able to do it on their things, and I think also it's not it's, Archimedes. I mean, there's a lot of challenges to it. It's like you know, basically scaling it, and then there'd be a lot of variables involved. If especially well, like, like, as ships, I was reading like, this. I was reading this thing about like about that about Archimedes mirror mirror weapons and stuff, and it was like it was going through history about like how at the time of his death, like there's like written history of like these his the idea of that weapon being utilized for other facets, like they were using it for cooking, right? But like no nowhere near did they say like oh they would harness it for weapons but they they were like u- using his archimedes kind of same ideas and principles without naming archimedes obviously separated using it for cooking and stuff and, and other, copyrighted that shit archimedes. yeah another and uh, so like people are kind of like well m- maybe it's just something that was lost lost in in time right some sort of technology that was lost in it's time. like the george it's like the george foreman grill but from well, and there's like but there's there's like a couple it's, of, it's just archimedes a couple, grill <laughs> like there's a couple other interesting ones that popped up for me was like uh, the Israeli Israel Israeli uh, Israelites? How do Israeli, I say it? Israelites. 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 That's the one. Yeah. Israelites <laughs> at the Battle of Jericho, right? They they going apparently right to the Jews, marched. Are you? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Going they right have to the it. Jews? <laughs> the Jews. They got the, the energy weapons. Uh, they were walking like during the Battle of Jericho. They they watched marched around the walls with horns and the Ark of the Covenant, and the walls just fell right so it's like what you're saying is the ark of the covenant was the first circumcised space laser yeah Yeah. okay that's that's a different type of weapon though that's kind of like tesla's tesla's earthquake machine that's like manipulating frequency of matter to make it crumble that's i think it was just the 11 it did whatever you wanted it to do if you could focus on nazis faces yeah yeah i've heard Um, of that one too but i I just want to quickly go back to the death ray and mythbusters because when, if you search the internet, like, is the death ray possible? And like, well, the Mythbusters were unable to do it. It's like the Myth, Mythbusters work out of a fucking garage with duct tape and like not a huge budget. And you're like, if that was scaled up and you actually put engineers behind it and had the perfect, big, perfect mirrors, because people have done it at small scale where they crack bowling balls. So if well, you dude, had the a- money and the technology to make these giant mirrors that would focal, like put a hundred, like say like a hundred meters a focal point, where like a thousand mirrors would focus the energy, one hundred percent you could start fire with it. There's no, well, there's no dude, doubt about it. But just could you do it to a moving on what ship scale? Th- that yeah. just came over the horizon. So I guess. Yeah. I mean, who knows? There's a guy I don't Manuel Manuel Gomez, and uh, in like 1904 at the St. Louis World Fair, he like unveiled his device called the Pyrelio forest and basically it was a mere device that could heat superheat an object to 3500 degrees oh, shit. and he has a patent there's a u.s patent on it uh the u.s patent is u.s patent number uh seven nine seven eight nine one and like the the united states legit wanted this from him they wanted the patent they were like offering him a citizenship and he was like no i'm, I'm not interested and the machine was stolen oh, like shocker. legit lost in time not talked about anymore and stolen like his his one working model got got stolen while he was in the states after the world fair and they don't know and this thing was like and he could it it was like parabolic array of mirrors that concentrated sunlight to a common point and it would heat up to 3500 degrees it's crazy people have done it but only at short at short scale as far as we know yeah so it's like you know like and that's again short scale but like if you could have you can burn the shit out. out of an ant with them. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, buddy. But think it from six in inches away, you can just no melt that fucking thing. Sad. Yeah, sad. Melt the ground they walk on. Yeah. You are God with a fucking death ray to that ant. Like, <laughs> oh you yeah, just went, bang. you are Archimedes. You are. Well, that's an interesting thing too, because like now that we say like you know it's it's been the one of the things has been that short short area where these things have only worked. 
And the other thing I quickly wanted to touch on, like for ancient kind of evidence of this kind of stuff is like vitrified forts. Like I got, into, I kind of went down a rabbit hole of vitrified forts. I mean, like these things are like, and the cool thing about the vitrified forts is like, at first they thought they were only native to Scotland. And there are these basically these like stone structures that started in Scotland that have been melted. Yeah, right? by dragons, obviously. <laughs> yeah, dragon fire. Like, come on. Well, and it's it's like they've they've figured out they they don't actually have like a scientific consensus on what has exactly caused this because timber fires don't get hot enough to do this to these kind of stone forts. So they're like they they're not sure exactly what m melted uh, these stone forts, but like since the discover of all these and what they thought was native just to Scotland. They've found all sorts of these vitrified forts uh, across northern Europe and in Turkey uh, that they just thought were part of the landscape now that they've now realized are like these melted forts. And they have no idea exactly how this happened. They, you know, they people have put suggestions and but it's interesting because they like no one truly has like a be like an explanation that is that everyone's like yes we agree on that they have really no idea because it takes talk upwards of three thousand degrees to burn these fucking stone rock. forts yeah we talked about rock. it briefly when we did uh like the ancient atomic theory yeah is that like back because there is other fort yeah there's forts in like indian stuff that seem to be melted for no reason and like did they have nukes back <laughs> that that's the goes the theory like they they were to, to able to develop some type of like tactical nuke back in the day they were to be able to melt stone dragons <laughs> just dragons dragons yeah well dragon fire that makes sense because they, or they had directed energy it, just a directed handheld energy in this fucking no nuke. that that makes Cold sense range. that because everyone knows i'm back on the flat earth i believe it so yeah. that's before we had too much carbon dioxide. That's when the dragons would come over the ice wall and still attack us. But now there's mm. with 5G and 4G, they won't come anymore. It makes it sense. Affects, affects their uh, navigation systems. I learned that on Rumble. <laughs> Rumble, <laughs> Rumble sounds like the place to be. What are we Dude, doing? Dude, it's awesome. Right? I love it. Unhinged. We should just live stream just on Rumble. But but so there's. <laughs> I wish it, it doesn't connect for some reason, but I tried there. But like there's 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 tons of like historical, you know, historical conspiracies of these things existing. So it's 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 kind of cool that you're like, you know, there's stories of this stuff existing. And it's like now in today's day and age, could we have, you know, perfected that kind of technology? Absolutely. We'll talk. <laughs> we, you could talk about like mythology, like fucking Zeus and Thor and that kind of stuff, too, like lightning bolts from the sky. Yeah, any any type of pretty much like a weapon, I mean, we godly do have weapon. Bolts coming from sky. Yeah, anyway. the directed it's energy. Lots of it's directed, it's directed energy. energy. We said it's it was from Rumble. Electrons. We yep. cited Rumble on that. Straight okay. from the sky, Zeus chucking okay. bolts down. Um, so light. But, this entire time, lightning has just been directed energy. It's not. Yeah, according to that guy, that one okay. old guy on Rumble. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, but directed. Also, energy. we should all be dead if, according to him. Yes, that's true. Right. He so did say. Also, like I said, if you aren't on the rumble train, you know what? get on He's it. not wrong. We all will die one day. It's true. And yeah. it will yeah. be because we all took the vaccine when we were And we 30. have been getting closer to death. Yeah. Getting we're slowly getting closer every day. Yeah. It's tiptoeing our way up there. All right. Fine. He's all right. He's got it. All right. All right. He's on. He's on to it. Okay. But the um, so yeah, it's it, it, you can go back in mythology and be like, okay, there's all these things, and then you can also find plenty of examples in pop culture, science fiction of like the concepts of behind uh, directed energy weapons. You know, so we said we already said Star Wars, Independence um, Star, Day, Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> Independence Day, uh, like a hundred other things, um, and uh, like those aren't like as far as like the right now probably one of the more advanced uses for for directed energy weapons is, is like as a defense system like what i think one of the actually this year um israel just put out like a kind of like a working like they had like a working um system where they're calling it like it's the iron beam where they have the you know they have the iron dome one right now which is basically ballistic so you fire two missiles and they track down missiles that are incoming missiles and then knock them out with other missiles but the idea is like they have this other system they've been working they on they fight missiles with missiles right but the other system that they're working on is the iron beam where it's basically a laser defense system where you would so have a set of it, it is the 
That's it Jewish space them. laser. They, they have it. Uh, it is a laser. Um, what it would be like, they basically load them up on a truck. These things are huge. They look like giant spotlights. Um, and you drive them around and you basically, you'd have to, they have their own generators or you can hook them into electrical grid. Um, and then you would drive them out to wherever you need them to be. And then they would, instead of spending, you know, 10 to $20,000 per missile, you're spending $2,000 for each shot of that laser. Apparently it's Bunch like, of they cells. The cells. Just as many uh, you're just ejecting it. your cells. You're, you're directly connected to the rabbit. The right. rabbit's banging the drum and you use the fucking laser. It's like D batteries are just ejecting out of this yeah. laser. Gun. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've all played apex legends. It's like, you pull the thing and you have to reload it. Dude. Every time you use the energy cartridge, you got to pop it up, pop it in and back in. So it works. That, <laughs> that iron that iron beam is actually like a collaboration because I was reading the because Lockheed Martin is like the leader in the states mm-hmm. and they're actually that's a, they're a collaboration on that project. And them and Raytheon, I believe. Yeah, it's they call the iron beam collaboration, and yeah, it's between them. Is uh, so it's like U.S. It's a U.S. like Israeli joint effort to develop this fucking ground based laser that can shoot missiles out of the sky just well, by pure heat. The Russians have one too. That Perservet. Have you heard of that one? Dude, I'm sure I haven't heard of that one, but I'm sure all everyone's working on their own version of this kind of tech. They openly talked about using it in Ukraine to shoot down drones and shit. Yeah. Why that? And I'd imagine they're probably pulling some Havana syndrome bullshit too. Like, I don't know. Well, I mean, technically those anti-drone guns are kind of directed energy weapons. The ones that basically shoot Shoots out like radio high, yeah, they high them, frequency yeah. radio waves at a, uh, at a drone to basically disable it or, you know, trick it into just landing and then you go and disable it manually. But yeah, those, those are also technically directed energy weapons. <laughs> right. And, <laughs> the, and, then Lock, and then Lockheed Martin, they have, they have them on, they have airborne versions called the A H E L or the Tals. And then on, if they're mounted on a ship, they call it the Helios. Mm-hmm. So there's different versions. And on the one on the ship, because obviously it's on, on a fucking destroyer, it's a gigantic fucking laser, like mm-hmm. huge. Like, so the amount, because especially if that ship was like nuclear powered, like with like a nuclear reactor, so like limitless energy, you could like power that baby up and just like if you're gonna do, if you're gonna put a laser weapon on anything, a ship was your to, for a big one, ship's number one. Like, space would be awesome, but to get it up there and build it and the okay, well, here, here's, it here's, here's my here's my here's my question about a ship based laser. I guess you're, I guess you're shooting at air targets would be the. You should, sure, you should you should air yeah. for sure, but definitely if you're, I mean, if you're within on the horizon, you can see the yeah. Because I'm land saying one. like, yeah. Because then it's like, unless the Earth's flat, and then you're then you're fucking. You can shoot. You can shoot forever. Yeah, wait. Yeah, if the <laughs> Earth's flat, then you're just like, you wouldn't be able to. Aim yeah, well, it. that's what I'm saying. Like, then it makes more sense because you no, the air density anyway. will get in the way. That's why you can't see. Oh, atmospheric that refraction. Far. That's what happens. No, not refraction. <laughs> not refraction. It's just density of air. Makes oh, it, you can't see. That's why you can't bounce it off the ionosphere then. <laughs> there's um, no ionosphere in a flat earth that's a sphere how do radio ions work? flat how does that work <laughs> come up with a word for that ionosphere ionos hmm. we'll have to ask david weiss when we get him back on for part three yeah. ionos plane <laughs> ionos plane yeah i like it yeah so there you go yeah, it's a but yeah. So the as far as like the iron beam goes, like yeah, they they they, they kind of try to sell it on like the cost efficiency thing, where they're like, yeah, instead of spending this much money, you'd spend this much money. But it's most of the most of the like the investors or the people who are going to be like, yeah, I'm going to foot the bill for this. They're like, yeah, that's how much it costs to like shoot those down. But what about to maintain these? Because you're going to need like a whole new section of people to kind of maintain these lasers and like main dude, just maintaining sh- shit on a ship takes a lot of stuff like i can't imagine what maintaining a big fucking laser takes <laughs> to get it all that's like crazy you'd have to have like you'd have to have a specialized entire like unit on the I ship don't, to I be don't, like maintaining so, man. Laser. I, I, and long term fucking... it's gonna pay off wouldn't it yeah but i've had you'd have to be fucking... cleaning that thing every day like you'd have to no, be cleaning that just... uh, yeah i've what? never what? once trained i've listen dan i've never once ever in the last eight years had to change a battery or clean or do anything to my laser pointer that I play with my cats with not once. And it's worked like a hot damn Just every fucking day. Right. Yeah. Just fucking boom, fired yeah. up. Works perfect. I've been blinding right? planes from my black backyard for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. It still works. Yeah, I still got my green laser from Thailand works. I don't know if I've changed batteries in that thing too. Oh, I have once. Right. Yeah. I'm not fucking, it's a once, laser so show you... in my backyard every night. You can, ma- you can manage a battery change. 
That, that's a good question though, Dan. Like how much would, because if it's a produce, if it's that powerful of a weapon and producing that much heat, I guess it would have to be made of like fucking tungsten or something. Something that does. But wouldn't not it make melt, more like, sense to have it in space then? Because then you're not so like, then yeah, you can just eject. You still have the you still have the maintenance. Space still maintenance debris and shit running into it. Yeah, radiation well, just, just like on just, the just the, just the weight of the of that type of device. And would have it, to say, be, it, be say, it, say it has to be made of like tungsten or something super high heat metal that doesn't melt yeah. at all to get it up there. I, that's what SpaceX has been doing, though. They're just dropping one piece at a time and assembling it up there. Oh, Who's putting Ultron it together? Dude, up Elon, there Musk, Elon, Musk has ev- Elon Musk has every characteristic of a supervillain. He is, 100%. So he's oh, I, except not smart. <laughs> not smart. What? He's super well, he's rich. He's smart. <laughs> well, he's, he's yeah, smart. Well, I mean, you'd have to be, you have to be somewhat smart? smart to... I mean, so maybe because really how can, how can you wreck an smart entire smart. internationally recognized brand like such as Twitter and run it into the ground? <laughs> like, <laughs> is it ra- as it ran into the ground? Yeah, I'm actually, they're, de- they're advertising things down sixty percent. What about all his other like, businesses, though? What about everything yeah. else? He does. I think he bought Twitter. But he doesn't run you. those businesses. Like <laughs> this is the people who there are other people who run those businesses. He has engineers who run those businesses. I mean, those people, people don't. Are I don't know. Smart people. I'll don't disagree sp- with you. I don't. He might have made a mistake. I don't think he's makes him stupid. I think uh, Twitter X or whatever it's called is uh, in infancy, and in five years you might look back and be like, "Yeah, you know what? <laughs> maybe he did some stuff right." But maybe well, that's I mean, his. I mean, maybe that's I mean, his fucking his origin story as a supervillain. Yeah, Twitter yeah, X yeah. destroys him. He needs like everything's been going <laughs> too good for him. It's been going I mean, too good. Say, that that like, sets him off. He needs to like, make money. You know, yeah, like yeah. those the fucking you know not to you know I get it. It's a worldwide app, but like views on like you know. the t- carlson trump you know interview during the that that thing did numbers the numbers were amazing uh did it like killed any kind of ratings that anything like stateside network tv does on the app live right so it's like well network tv in general they got something they got something whether or not they can they can harness it as a power f- for good or if it's for it's, good or evil or Remains evil or, or whatever. Once. But like it's oh. there, it, there's definitely something there where it's like, you know, you're getting an audience unlike anyone's ever seen. No, it's a good question. Cause I actually, I just, you know, Elon Musk, he started PayPal. That's like all his money, but then he started other. What, what is he an expert? I don't know. Is he an expert coder? Is he an expert? Nope. He's uh, an expert fucking entrepreneur. Just an expert I mean, businessman that hires the right people yeah. for the I right mean, job. he has the money. And I like think his, his dad, dad running an emerald mine. Yeah. So, I mean, like. His dad, his dad was uber rich. His dad was uber rich, I think. I mean, he's, I mean, that's Tony Stark. His superpower is money. Well, he's also a pretty smart guy. So, oh, I mean, like. Tony yeah. Stark's one of the smartest guys in the MCU. Yeah. So, yeah. it's like, but I don't know it. Elon Musk is not that smart. <laughs> well, if he's if you're the, if you have that much real. money, you could hire the greatest people with the greatest minds, learn from them, and be yeah. almost as smart. I, I think uh, so I, I think actually, I actually don't. I don't know, think though, he's a dummy. I think he would surprise you if you sat down and had a stupid. conversation. Like, with come him. on, there's no chance. I don't think there's any chance he's stupid. The guy could be sitting on millions, fucking just doing nothing. Sorry, billions with his parents' money and just doing sweet fuck all. He's choosing to do shit with it. He bought some new hair. Yeah, he's going boy, to space too. And he's building space lasers. Next thing yeah. he's going to start is a asset management company. And start buying, he, buying up all the burnt, the burnt shit. Now, if he didn't buy that fucking hair, he'd be looking real Lex Luthor. Yeah, if he right? would, like be, then we'd be like, okay, listen, yeah, yeah. like if he looked more like a boring Bezos? company. They're still making blow torches or whatever, aren't they? I think they've, they've built like I don't know, company. like one the kilometer tunnel. of tunnel or something. Oh wow! That's I don't know actually. I have no idea what. You heard about they're trying, yeah, they're trying to make all those tunnels under LA and like trying to merge. That was a good idea. Fucking uh, Nevada. I mean, it is a good. It seems like a good idea. Just is that possible? I have no idea. (laughs) Could have just built. He could have just built like his own high speed rail. He should just get into high speed rail. Like Hmm. (laughs) he should do start selling the monorail to small town USA. (laughs) Anyways, we'll 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 have another uh, another episode on that. How stupid Elon Musk is, but well, we'll wait till he turns evil. And then yeah, we we'll gotta wait till he turns evil, and it all comes to. tumbling out. The Boring Company is currently uh, just so you, a little update. The Boring Company is currently working on a 68 mile tunnel network under Las Vegas. Cool, they're in Vegas. That's now. super villain shit. He's gonna be mole man. <laughs> oh, under sure. Vegas, how yeah. far? Hey, Area 51 S4 was not oh, far from Vegas. No, oh, it's shit. all linked yeah. up now. 
right well, from McCarran. He, no, he's McCarran drilling to holes. He's drilling holes under Vegas. How long until he goes up under those Cenos and just drills holes? Fucking yeah, robs Ocean's the banks 15. to get him rich. <laughs> just die hard. Like, look was it, it die what's hard going on? Three or two. Yeah, it's die hard three too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hans Gruber's brother. Yeah, <laughs> as he comes out, he's like, "My." Were they from South Africa too? Elon Gruber. Were they from German? Uh, I think he was German, but. <laughs> Um, where, where um, were we? We got we off yeah, on Elon. We a little sidetracked here. <laughs> we're all a little on the wine and nine here. So the um, so this idea that the the space the space based lasers have kind of come down into the uh, the the conspiracy ecosystem uh, is kind of something that is like if you kind of go back, like it's not it's not that prevalent until you hit like the California wildfires back in 2018. Uh, when that started, there was a lot of a lot of conspiracy theories being thrown around about this. Like it kind of just like naturally popped up into this thing, uh, out into like the conspiracy sphere. I don't know what conspiracy plane. So I'm sorry. Conspiracy plane. Yeah. Conspiracy plane. Yeah. Um, so, um, so as this, as this theory kind of developed, like a bunch of like websites, as they noticed like people have, have gone through and like kind of tracked this out. People, you know, so, uh, people, you know, people who study conspiracy theories, that can, I guess sociologists and whatever um and, and kind of like track down these things that seen like how it kind of developed into its, its own little like kind of anthology now if anybody remembers like back in like 2018 2017 this was like QAnon early days like i know QAnon uh, is now yeah. like the is now ubiquitous and everybody knows what it is um yeah. but back then it was like this was when it was Q still was like cool, the burge like, what's <laughs> q what is it? What's good? The Q crumbs. It was never cool. There was some mystery <laughs> and some intrigue, right? Where are these drops? The drops. <laughs> we can't wait for the next Q drop. Yeah, this is yeah, this is getting, back when Q and I was I'm still getting, like, getting it's, it's coming, it's coming, the storm's coming, it's, storm it's coming. coming, it's right over the, it's right over the horizon, it's coming, it's still coming. Um, so, moving. those were good uh, days. <laughs> that was the peak of conspiracy culture. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, now, so a lot of websites pick this both nationally and internationally, like picking up these ideas that that the North California's what did they call it the campfire, um, which was one of the deadliest fires in the history of California, um, along with the Woolsey and Hill fires, I believe that they had that they were they weren't caused by what the the you know the um, the very the prosaic behavior. the prosaic explanation being wind patterns or the brutally dry conditions that they had or the worsening effects of climate change um but no that these were actually caused by some type of directed energy weapon that is owned by some nefarious elements within governments or world governments or overarching you know breakaway society such and such uh and so <laughs> sure elon musk doesn't have a fucking directed energy device we're not Maybe sure he already is all. a super villain we don't I mean, know you said he was making flamethrowers those are technique we did it's not it. a flamethrower dan that's right on it <laughs> um yeah it's a directed energy weapon it's not a flamethrower it's taking yeah fuel injecting it through a nozzle directed energy boom Everything it's, is. It's directed energy weapon. Just like a super soaker. Super soaker is directed energy weapon. If, if we use the loosest definition. Jet fuel <laughs> and then have a lighter taped to the end, you have. Well, it's kin it's kinetic energy. It's just like you, you use an air pressure to push weapon. it and it's directing it. So directed energy weapon in the loosest definition <laughs> of the word. Uh, so if you take, um, if you kind of take that stuff at, at face value, uh, then you have like this idea that these lasers are being used for some reason to cut to either start a fire or strategically start many fires uh, for reasons that are unknown to us, or, you know, it's that something, I it's think easy, one of the, <laughs> it's easy there's a couple there's a couple of theories being thrown around about why you would start these fires and so like one of them i think I, this is the one that always kind of popped up so they they ended up merging not only taking the space lasers but also the fema death camp theories and making mm -hmm. the, the fema boogeyman where the united nations was basically going to put everybody in the death camps and then you know to centralize their global control uh over the world and they almost and then, did it if it wasn't for those pesky liberals or no, the Repesky Republicans. Who who saved us? I don't know. <laughs> John F. Kennedy. JFK. Yeah, Sorry. JFK. 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 And Elvis. He's, coming, he's still coming That's back. That's after he got resurrected? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Along with his son. This is a father's son. 
Uh, I've heard. Okay. I'm yeah. sure. Okay. You wouldn't know this unless you follow alt history. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it would be so funny to write like in 20 years from now, just, just kind of have that stuff jotted down and then write an alt history book of what happened in this time. You'd be like, well, actually, JFK got resurrected and protected everyone in the States from the FEMA camps. <laughs> Um, yeah, because you know a uh, a giant space laser going around and, and starting fires is much more plausible than the one cause of well the one stated cause of the El Dorado fire, which was a pyrotechnic device used in gender reveal, which that was pretty nuts. Well, Everybody there's, remembers that. Okay, there was that one, a... and there was also aging <laughs> infrastructure, like really old, knocked over by severe winds that caused fire. But then, okay, but, but then there's also there's way cooler. But there's way also better. like weird things where it's like. There's a YouTuber that goes by um, Dutch 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 Sense Dutch Sense I think is it's called, and he has like he what he does is he tracked. He used to be an earthquake guy. He's just into earthquakes. Like that was the thing. Just liked sure. earthquakes. Earthquakes. Quakers. Quakers. Slowly, what they call them. It's his huh? Quakers. Quakers or Quakies. Quakes. That's what we and do. he, he was just like earthquake guy, like earthquake, you know. And uh, he eventually started to kind of start to do conspiracy stuff. When he found a pattern of uh, like fires in Idaho that were like perfectly spaced out, kind of like in this like arching pattern across the state. And he was like, that's just interesting to me. Like, I, that's interesting. I, I think it's weird. He's like, you know, that's either a natural pattern by Earth or that's a man made pattern. Like, it's kind of a, it just it struck him as interesting. So he overlaid out of curiosity satellite uh tr like satellite trajectories when those fires started and there's like satellite paths that are almost identical to the like the path the cascading path paths of these idaho fires and he's just he he's just he's like oh this is so cool he's like are the satellites starting fires he's you're like, saying satellite he, but what you really mean is death ray death, death ray. ray but he, he he even never says he he like there's one video where there's a guy talking and i don't know if it's him but there's a guy talking he's like Maybe it's just the reflection. Maybe the reflection of these things we don't realize are starting fires. <laughs> like, oh, I don't uh, think the space reflection uh, is causing. Uh, did, he, did he say what fires. satellites they were? Because a lot of times, if the satellite is registered, you can look up what satellite was above. Um, no, it just showed a bunch of flight like satellite paths, so it didn't really say. So you could Star just Link. use any. It was Starlink, like, and Starlink was beating down. <laughs> like, you sell. You got it. We got it. Starlink. Elon Musk. We have to okay. We have to go cross check all uh, fucking Starlink satellite releases. Could you imagine wildfires? Do you, do you remember when they first came out and they were highly refractive and they were actually blocking the like amateur astronomers from seeing into space? And they were like, "You need to do something." They so they had to but they start were distracting. Definitely. Yeah, they had to like start. Well, they were distracting so they get all their death lasers up there. Yeah. Oh. Right. They were causing fires everywhere they went, and Elon's just like, "Ooh." No, he's doing it intentionally. And he's buying up he's the a land. Super villain. It's but a if you think about it, like because if you think about just on the wildfire, uh, it, California, and I'll, I'll I'll talk about the one like we we've because we have devastating wildfires in British Columbia. But it's like if Canada you talk in about this year was brutal. Like, and the thing with wildfires is you have a wildfire. Wildfire season's over. There's other things that happen in those areas that have wildfires because, like, a lot of times, like what we saw two was it two years ago. We had devastating wildfires. Then we had a really bad snowfall. And because there's not this foliage and root systems to absorb all this moisture, what happens is that the moisture all goes in the dirt and it causes devastating fucking landslides. And these landslides came and they actually knocked down Highway 1. Like in new, like numerous positions, like crippled BC. It wasn't I snowfall. It was just straight rainfall. Just straight rain. But it's the it same thing. Like, And that's, that rainfall is and those landslides are caused because of wildfires it's like it's like a cascading thing so it's like to me if someone were to tell me if if 20 years from now it would well, come ashes, out that, uh what do they call it uh where it repels water hydrophobic repellent yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah hydrophobic sounds right so yeah when you have a huge fire and it burns like the whole hillside and all the ash is kind of there before stuff starts to regrow and it rains it doesn't absorb into the soil the same way, and it just all comes fucking flying. Water off there. a duck's back. Yeah. Now, if you in 20 years you were to tell me, like, hey, actually, um, 
space laser technology like you know in 20 years from now we get documents released space lasers are real and russia was actually starting forest fires it's like okay well like starting forest fires like is fucking crippling like it crippled british columbia like it crippled us yeah i didn't want to tell you guys but it was uh, i'll tell you guys now it's actually the u.s space lasers and that's what you get for the war of 1812 (laughs) for burning down the white house you assholes (laughs) Like, pay, they've been, been planning it this whole time <laughs> we waited we played the long game yeah payback's a bitch <laughs> and you, they're just, and you're they're like, just built hey, up you, you're hyperinflation that's us <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> we're burning your country down from the inside James Ma- Dolly Madison says hi <laughs> your es- escalated housing prices that's us baby <laughs> we're coming in we're gonna swoop in buy all the land we're bidding. Canada Trudeau's is just a fucking America. American plant that's yeah, it, Trudeau's yeah. an American plant. It's, it's been the same. It's been the way the whole time. Yeah. yeah, because of your because of the low exchange rate, it's all a discount to us. <laughs> mm. All right, hey, before known. we go farther, we're gonna take a quick beer break because uh, I got to pee and I got to yeah, get another beer. So uh, yeah. we got more to talk about. And, and by beer be... break, I mean you guys can see us because I don't have this set up properly. So if you're watching live, you're gonna see yeah. all the behind the scenes on this current. Yeah. Okay, Dan.
Um, so uh, Canada and the United States are not the only places that suffer from wildfires, that as exists. we mentioned before. That yeah, <laughs> Africa. He said I mentioned Africa, but I was like, I don't know why people don't like. They try to forget the uh, the Australian bushfires from the 2019 exist. 2020. Um, yes, yeah, so, it's also South. So yeah, I guess I would technically still be africa i guess yeah. <laughs> um but those ones were really bad too but um those ones but the it's funny because like the directed energy weapon theory popped up during that time too like it also popped up or like right after the um the right after that so there's a bunch of photos and videos circulating online purporting to show the it's like oh this this bar of light right here is a is a direct energy weapon this is the laser beam right here you can see it and then uh, you know later on a lot of those photos were found to be either altered or to be miscaptioned from something else that uh that had been <laughs> like a photo that had been pulled from like a fucking like a plume burn or something off of a uh, an oil rig or something well, like, like the, that the famous even... the famous one from maui is an edited spacex launch yeah that yeah yeah, yeah that's one of them um but they, so they want you to believe so they want you to know yeah and then one of the one of the reasons that people had uh they were you know they were saying like you know why would they they start these fires so one of the things was um that some people had taken like a map of like a like a um a kind of proposed high speed rail line like on that 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 mm. part of Australia's coast and then they kind of overlaid it over there and basically that's where you also get the like the 15 minute city thing from is that yeah that they were going to you know they want to burn out all this stuff so they can put it on a high speed rail and then oh. they would you know, once I you put the high speed that. rail it it makes it easier to control these cities in it some ties way into what we talked about last week too it's like their their 15 minute cities are big on owning nothing and loving it well, isn't I actually kind of recall now be happy. when the California ones were happening that someone was sending us like something about that uh, similar thing, similar thing about like it's it's has to do with these high speed rails, right? Like these fires. Yeah, are... yeah. During the California, this, like that was also a reason. Like during then that too, it was the same not thing. Not built that Simpsons they still not built. Well, we just well Amtrak is is still kind of holds a monopoly and they're but they're slowly cracking open. Eventually, they will be done. And then we'll have yeah. Really nice Joey Joe in our Discord point. sent a map of the fucking wildfires, and the proposed map of the high speed rail route, and it's like identical, the route of the high speed rail and where the fu- like California fires hit. If you were to overlay them, you would be like, yeah, that's pretty fucking in the same exact areas that you were trying to run these rails. So this would be like the most probably the populated places like where people live. <laughs> uh, you got hey, you got to clear the land. Sure, you got you, you know you got to rip out all the infrastructure so you can rebuild it, and that costs money. And yeah, yeah. Well, it makes think, perfect think sense. About, so if you if you light it all on fire, not everyone has insurance. It's going to be cheaper in the in that way to burn it all, pay the insurance fees, but not everyone's have have insurance, and then. We'll relocate them for cheaper somewhere else. It's, it's a it's a business decision to melt these places to build the high speed rail. In their mind, right? Yeah, it's, a... <laughs> it's all it's, it's a... all. You, hey, you got to follow the money. And all these conspiracies, it's always follow the yeah. money. It's always 100%. they them. <laughs> yeah. Would it be, it be somebody? Oh, like, <laughs> is there a different different yeah, plural? Pro- pronoun yeah, that you'd use <laughs> like no i'm just saying it's always they them that are doing this we're always talking about us. the they yeah they would so do said this. it's always they them what, what, i don't it know is. is there is, should we use it, should we be using the formal usted days or something like vosotros <laughs> but it's just it's interesting to me like i was just kind of looking at like where they're like they're going ahead with this high speed rail so it's like yeah, like Zell says, like, could it be possible that, you know, it's no it's strategic, strategic arson on no, some no of these the, cases? No Would the it be like, because if you think about 60 years ago, 70 years ago, and you'd be like, hey, you, you heard a story now, hey, the mob came and fucking burned a bunch of land, right? So they could, uh, you know, push ahead their fucking construction projects. You'd be like, yeah, that's from the, that was crazy. But I... You know, like now we're like, ah, there's no way that would happen today. No, I'm all on board with that. 
That's right? exactly what happened. Hundred percent. The, the just fucking high fire, speed fire is just so is so notoriously hard to control that it just doesn't it's not doesn't seem like a great weapon to do it with. No, yeah, it doesn't. if you Once want you total, s- you want total annihilation, then that's perfect. If you, yeah, if you don't care if like we're going for this area and all this is collateral damage, and yeah, I mean, fire is the best option because it's fueled by wind. And then, but you know what's crazy is that just recently, like last week, uh, like State Farm and another big insurance agency said in California they're not going to issue any more policies to do with fire. Well, that's the same thing with that's the same thing like, with like farmers. Do it. Sorry, we're uh, not going to do it. We're, and we're doing this because we project the devastation to be so severe that it's not profitable for the company. So we yeah. will honor our current ones, but we will not issue any more insurance policies yeah. for any private building. Yeah. Uh, what? It's the same thing Fucking... as in Florida. Like Florida, all the insurance companies are pulling out, not for fires, for other reasons. For hurricane but, shit. Yeah, they're pulling out for there too because they know that the hurricanes are just like, getting worse. Yeah, we've decided <laughs> it's no longer profitable to insure you for anything. Yeah, um, they uh, are a business. Fucking, uh, <laughs> it's like happening. mini impromptu mongoose here, but on my last night shift, we Cue were the leaving the hospital <laughs> like, Cue the like music. fucking midnight. Um, we were leaving the hospital around midnight. Cro- uh, Cross and Harvey kind of looked to the left, noticed like fucking giant flames coming from right above my, where we live. I so I'm like, house. told my partner, I'm like, fucking pin it. So we drive over, get on the mic with the dispatch, being like, listen, there's there's flames. The forest fire has been out there. Like, we got to go check this out. As we're getting closer, we go all the way up Horizon, which is right up past my house. Um, we're the first on scene to this fucking, like, multi-million dollar mansion with, a, like, no exaggeration, 60 to 70 foot flames. Just fucking, the flames are golfing. All right? Like Ricky would say, they were golfing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we run up, starts fucking banging on the door. We get the guy out. There's only one guy. Start, evac- evacuate the neighborhood. By that time, bunch of fire trucks showed up they start working on the house the whole area ended up getting evacuated the guy that we initially evacuated was sitting on the fucking back of the ambulance right and we were talking to him his buddy bought the house a week ago all right well within Kelowna, about a week ago there was a giant firestorm absolutely no fucking way you're going to get house insurance for fire so we bought this fucking like i think it was like a 1.5 million dollar mansion with a ferrari in the garage thing burnt to the fucking ground zero insurance what's this co- what's the suspected cause i had started in the garage and it sounded like the fire was shooting at us so something electrical i'd imagine i uh, see Sounds it's like funny because i i did there. see i did see the article about that one and in my head i went oh uh i bet it's arson because i thought everything burned probably around it lowered the property value and they were like fuck no that whole area was untouched oh really Let's yeah, create, the, the whole area, that whole part of Horizon, not not a single house burnt down in yeah, there. The thing about that is, I, was fine. I went golfing in the morning. That or I had like a seven oh seven tea time, like the first tea time of the day, and I seen the smoke billowing. I was like, oh, I should just we should just call because you know, you know sometimes like people don't call because like the fire was yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah. Then the fire came back, so we call, and I was like, yeah, there's a fire up. Uh, it's on the hill. You fucking rat! What a snitch you are. <laughs> <laughs> so that's funny that that was that was the fire because i thought for sure it was the forest and then i i hung up i told i told him it was like I, it looks like it looks like it's somewhere up west clone estates horizon drive i it's hard to tell it's exactly uh, where it was and i was like well i'm and that's all i can tell you she's trying to ask all these questions like i'm just t- i'm calling from the highway i'm i should i'm actually snitch. illegally talking on my phone right now okay yeah so, uh, i mean it, i'll be honest with you like i've been to a few structure fires i've never seen anything like that before it, it looked like the smoke when I went. The smoke was just billion. I was like, it looks like it's whatever it is. It's there's no fire. There's no. It's out. So whatever it was, like it's toast. I had no idea it was a house though. I thought it was. I thought it was part of the forest. Yeah. No. It was crazy. Crazy. Hmm. There you go. Sad. Directed energy. Hundred percent. From space. Yeah. Well, it only makes sense. What does that guy do for work? Is he part of? I don't know. Uh, Didn't get that three letter. Three letter agency or something. Maybe. Ooh. He's like, I finished my house off too. <laughs> no insurance though. He's Did his last name end with an off? Like an O V or anything? I don't know. Didn't get that far. Yeah, just moved here from Russia. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. So let's move I mean, on to the talk- hot topic. The hot topic? Oh, that's it's a go. Maui fire. Let's fucking right. go. Burnt. Awful. 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 Like, Awful. 
man, a lot, a lot of people died. It's super sad. Like it's just yeah, you know, like it's, I, like it's, unbelievable hurricane force winds fueling like the, a fucking fire unheard of. It was I mean, the biggest was, fire in the U.S. in how long, Dan? Like a fucking hundred years? Yeah, at least a hundred years. Crazy. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. It, it, well, the hurricane was 500 miles away, but the winds were gusting at 60 miles an hour, mm-hmm. which is they canceled days, school that day because it was so insane. bad. Like they canceled yeah. school that day because of the winds. Yeah, because they were worried about like they were about down power lines fortunate. and stuff like that. So they were what like they canceled the, here, school again. Not to get too off topic, but like what the fuck? Because like for us. Like the windiest time we've had all year was the day of the fucking firestorm. Literally the windiest day we had all fucking no, year. And that's like, actually what are the chances well. of that? That's incorrect as well. The windiest day was about a month before where it flipped all the boats. Oh, sorry. The second windiest the second day. Second windiest day. Right? Like we never, we're barely ever deal with wind. That's well, the only natural disaster that Kelowna usually gets is a windstorm every few years, which does capsize some boats and does some property damage. And then once every 20 years, we get a fire that breaks city perimeter. <laughs> and this yeah. was the year. But yeah, the Maui one, man, I was just like, that's pretty much, I, I've been watching this for the last, because we've talked about this now on like co-conspirators and a couple other after hours and stuff. So I started watching like the coverage of what happened. Just an insane fire. Yeah. I mean, like you had, The wind's you coming had... down the mountain push the fire into the city. There's only a couple ways out. Just like worst case scenario happened. Burned yeah, it was all a- these beautiful properties owned by like, it's like generational um, fucking yeah. homes that have been owned by like native Hawaiians that have had that property forever that have refused to leave that property. Despite people trying to buy them out for several years. And then they lose it to a fucking massive forest fire. Yeah. And it's, I, I think a lot of the, like the conspiracy comes from of this one is like, because of the incompetence going on and, and seeing in, in helping the survivors. And, you know, you hear stories of like buildings that weren't impacted by the fire being handed eviction notices. Uh, and, and you're like, well, how are we getting eviction notices now? Like, you have to house well, people all are already these buying people, up these properties, right? Like this is crazy. Well, think, um, think about when properties burn is like, you still own the land. Yeah. 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 So like you can't, you, can't, you, know, you got it, fucking Oprah coming trying to buy all your property. The property up. is not for sale when it's burned. Like you would have to, you would have to decide to sell it. Right. And, 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 and then you have corporations coming in and at, uh, you know, offering to buy up these lands, you know, and we, and we seeing all that, but it's, it, it's one of those ones where it's like for, with this, it's like, you know, it's when people are like, how, how could this happen? And they're, they're, we can't get food and, you know, we're only supplying them with $700 each right now. Like, how is this happening? Like, never attribute to malice what you can attribute to comp, like uh, incompetence. And if anyone listening to this has ever worked in any kind of form of government, unbelievable incompetence. It's unbelievable. Right, almost to the point where you're like, this shouldn't be happening, but it's just a level of incompetence you've never even seen or imagined is the going safer on. the job, the more inefficient it becomes. Mm. And government is the ultimate form of that, in every on every level, because there, it, you get to be the the positions become inflated. There's too many people. No one, no one talk. The eight, like the different branches, don't like different levels don't talk to each other. There's no one. There's and, it's fucking crazy but and they even just keep the, growing and a job that being done from one guy is done by 10 in the city yeah. like just local government just like one there's one guy fucking digging 10 people nine people looking like that and it's, and that, it's just, even, and that just ramps up even on the even on the tagline of our our vi- or the the image of our video um for this live stream um one of the images circulating was this image of like a light beam coming from space and hitting uh maui Right, and it's like this is a directed energy. They fucking started it, right? And it's like this is circulated widely. It's on Rumble, it's on Twitter, X, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's all over the place. And Dan, is this a true picture? Is this a? Are we looking at a space laser, or is this a Photoshop job? Uh, well, it's not a Photoshop job. It's actually a miscaptioned one. I think is the one that you're referring to, and that one is actually. Um, 
it's actually a picture taken from I think 2018 uh, is where people tracked it down to, and it is the essentially like a um, it's like a controlled burn that occurred at like an Ohio oil refinery in January, and like the the beam of light that you see kind of going up is actually just we've talked about it before, but like the 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 aerial phenomenon, the atmospheric phenomenon, a light pillar, like it gets what you get one of those when there's like ice crystals in the air reflecting light and up whatever um but yeah it's right. that's essentially like scientists want you to believe. light pillar <laughs> yeah okay uh, Dray, death yeah. ray yeah. yeah um so yeah that's What's that's more what believable that one is. make believe ice pillar or laser beam from space right let me tell right. you something that might uh sound more unbelievable than that but is 100 percent true which is extremely bizarre to me hmm. um you guys you know who I, i'm gonna butcher his last name but uh john pelletier have you heard of him yet john pelletier well, well he's the uh the maui or the how do you leana how do you say it again lahaina lahaina the lahaina uh city police chief oh i know exactly do you know what, what he saying. did before oh you know i know where he was working before i he know who you're talking in about lahaina uh, yeah was, wait question yeah was he perhaps uh like the police chief he was the, in uh, well, Las he was, Vegas during he, the Vegas shooting, by any chance? He was the uh, incident command mm, that's what it was. covering the strip at the time of the Las Vegas shooting. And he moved to uh, Lahaina to get away from that tragedy, only to find himself in the thick of a bigger one. Wild. What are the chances? What of are the chances? And supposedly this guy has, like, FBI fucking clearance and a bunch of other crazy shit. Like, it's fucking weird well and then conspiracy theorists jump on that because they're like man there was some fucking questionable decisions being made in las vegas right and a lot of people point to that guy of being like you know because we heard multiple shooters this and that right like it you know and then there there's questions and we've we've never talked about las vegas shooter i mean it's there's probably been enough time now where we can kind of like dive into the ins and outs of that case because it is an interesting one all the tentacles uh, of conspiracy have either been disproven or the stuff that remains there's a lot behind it we could talk about it now yeah what the fuck are the chances of that that's so yeah. like this guy is involved in two of U- the u.s's mass ca- mass casualty Huge events in the last casualty. what yeah. 10 years like that's yeah. fucking crazy yeah and then well that's why people be like uh, what a what a coincidence Right to be a part of, and that's why conspiracy, like a lot of conspiracy theorists and stuff, like a lot of Rumble YouTube. <laughs> well, you you go down the like, fucking rabbit hole of the fifteen minute cities and these properties. People like fucking uh, BlackRock and Vanguard are trying to buy up these properties from these Native Hawaiians. They won't sell them, and then you look at like, I mean, a lot of people suspect uh, Lockheed Martin of manufacturing possible directed energy weapons. Well, they do and manufacture. They own pers- they, they, and they BlackRock and Vanguard own stocks in fucking Lockheed Martin. Because What's yeah, because you go down these fucking crazy rabbit holes. companies. Of course, you, yeah, you'd but own, you can see you'd own stocks in two of the most profitable yeah. companies in the United States. <laughs> like, yeah, but you can. Fuck? Yeah, we're like it's we're connecting the web here, though. Like you can see why people go down these fucking rabbit holes. Yeah, what I'm saying, right? Like, like, like there's all, right, all well, these fucking connections. If BlackRock and Vanguard get a hold of these properties, highly valued, it's going to increase the stock value for their. I'm not sure. Was that was that actually proven true that the, there were those things that people have documents showing that? I can't remember. Yeah, they, they were using the Iraq War. Hmm? Rumsfeld was on record saying that they were no I mean the Lahaina like, buying the properties like trying to buy properties from uh, oh I don't know I, I know mean, Oprah is I don't know anybody you else. can watch you I mean there's there's like there's well it's somebody like signed a contractor or I don't think I don't think anyone signed a contract or anything but there is there is videos of like locals saying that like I'm not selling my property you can ask me a million times like on TikTok Dude. and stuff and and various there other is no social doubt. medias there is no doubt that these asset management companies oh, see the crisis. And, and they're like, perfect. Because they're on record of saying that like their company goal, BlackRock especially, it's like BlackRock, Vanguard, and uh, State Street are the three biggest asset management companies in the U.S. Like, well, they're international, really, but they're based yeah. in the U.S. Dude, BlackRock 20, is killing Canada. By 2030, they're, they're predicted to own 60% of residential buildings in the United States. 60%. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. And then, so when someone comes, you sell out, you go to sell a home, right? 
and there's there's people putting bids in and you get a bid that's 20 percent higher and it's from an llc it doesn't say blackrock it will say some uh, either a number or a holding company name it's probably blackrock it's probably like the, if you trace the it, country there's a country i think it was either france was it france i can't remember one country is actually kind of putting a, the kibosh on that where they're starting to tax people like they're starting to tax like property like property purchases Honestly, by companies or whatever like they're taxing them more than they are by like just residential single buyers. i mean it just makes sense that well the fact that have, it that it became like that, that buying you know residential properties became an actual like investment thing it's a business. Is, and is, that's and that like that, that ever happened that is area terrible. that area like that area <laughs> worst they idea ever. The chops, right like ho- Maui, some of the most beautiful properties in in, in in the world, in the world, and you're just like they're like, oh, right? We can probably get for pennies and dollars because everything's destroyed, everything, it's right? Because like, they destroyed it. Yeah, they know it was all part of the plan, man. Right? Well, they want to build up too. It's in Lahaina. They want to build up. They want to build the towers. They want to. They want to develop. They want to do all that stuff. And yeah, right now, Lahaina, like a, Lahaina was a beautiful old city with like an awesome old historic downtown, and it was like. As close to the traditional Hawaiian culture, I guess probably you could get on, like a bigger city on Maui, and now it's pretty much like thousands of buildings were scorched, like it's gone. There's unless you're on some of the, because think about um, these old buildings is there's no fire code on buildings that were built a hundred plus years ago. They have bad if they have insulation at all, it's probably like fucking newspaper or newspaper. fucking sawdust. sawdust. <laughs> And then so a lot of the homes that didn't burn or just got minor damage are new builds with stucco and like asphalt roof and like built for fire resistant. Like so the fires don't spread through neighborhoods like that. But the old city of Lahaina was mostly old buildings and it just caught fire. Ate it. Ate it. It's crazy, man. So, yeah, like the asset management companies, 100 percent is not a conspiracy. They see the opportunity and no crisis goes to waste and they're going to be there and they're going to try and buy that's their mo that's exactly what they do now yeah it's a- the conspiracy goes to like are these companies so big and so powerful that they have the ins with these lockheed martin and other companies that they can either if they don't do it themselves they know what's gonna like they, they have an end can the, they manufacture can their they, own yeah. crisis to take advantage of that's the conspiracy that's what it is that's what people always talk about is can they manufacture this this crisis to take advantage of it? Or do they have advanced knowledge that's going to happen and they swoop in and fucking buy stuff? So, I mean, that's, that's where the conspiracy runs rampant because there is these companies that they operate in the legal framework of the United States and other countries and the fact that this company is a legal entity and it's allowed to grow endlessly forever if we don't. Unless it gets to the point where it's like a standard oil thing or like, you have to break this fucking thing up because this is taking over. We used to have, we used to have, we had, yeah, we used to have really robust antitrust laws. Not so much anymore. Yeah, no, I think no. yeah, well, yeah. There was a there was a certain great. well, there was a certain faction within the government that thought that Biden hamstringing <laughs> hamstringing some of our uh, hamstringing some of our yeah, you know, those kinds of regulating bodies was a good idea. <laughs> defunding um, those parts of the government that are actually meant to regulate some of these businesses. Somebody thought that was a good idea. And, yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's it, like, it's, it's interesting because like when I look at it like that and it's like, you, you always, you always like, nah, they could never, they could never, like someone could never, but it's like, if you know, a hurricanes coming, you know, which way the wind, like, man, you can look, there's the windy app and I can look two days and they can pretty much estimate which way the wind's blowing you know what I mean? Like which direction it's coming. If a storm's coming and you're like, if we started a fire here and like Zell said, like we know a lot of these buildings, like if one goes and there's a fucking heavy winds, they're all going, they're all going. And like the other thing too, for me is I'm like, man, uh, what doesn't get a lot of coverage that is a hundred percent out there is like, you know, we talk about serial killers and stuff, but there's people and shit out there firebugs baby firebugs man we that, see it every year here right mm-hmm. that are legit like they go out there and what they want to do and to for me for you for anyone to sit there and think there's not someone out there right now who's like looking at those kind of apps and being like holy fuck we're about to hit a windstorm and it's blown in this direction i bet i can fucking cause a huge fire there's fucking crazy people man there's crazy people oh, yeah. out there fucking doing that shit yeah, and they work like, for Black I was watching a video a few years ago. Yeah. A guy literally watching him start a fire. Like the cops caught him on camera. He started the fire. The cop is showing me on their phone. 
of him starting to fire and just bombing down a hill running away from it he started to fucking like the fire ended up getting to like 500 hectares crazy right? and they just love yeah, that they just love to nuts. watch the destruction right some like, people just want to watch the world burn yeah this is true. It's, yeah well, they should, yeah, yeah, they so should just like, get a job on the space laser team then should. Right. Well, no, you said it's a bunch of maintenance. You got to be cleaning shit all the time. Doesn't yeah. sound fun. Oh, it's, not for, any it's not for junk. That's where you start. You work your way up. So, okay. like, let's get back into like like specific directed energy weapons. Like, like what do we? What we've? I know we've talked about some of the issues, like with the heat and stuff, and we we would have to be. But what are some other issues that we might that might be in? Like, if this technology exists or doesn't exist, what are some things hampering this technology? Or Just difficulties, sheer, sheer scale of energy needed to yeah. fuel us like a it's huge logistical challenge. Laser. Yeah, like to put a, let's just let's just say you put a fucking laser in space. It's up, whatever. It's up eighty, a hundred, two hundred kilometers into the atmosphere. And then you had to generate that energy in enough force to be able to shoot it down through the atmosphere and light something on fire. It's, yeah, I'm sure it's doable. But just the, the sheer scale of that project is insane. In space. Have, it would have to be at least as large as the International Space Station, probably. And if it's sure. if, if it has its own like power supply, like, I mean, even if it's like, OK, so you have some kind of compact fusion generator inside of it or something like that, like those things still need maintenance. So you would still have to fly people up there to like fix it. Like to, to go up there and like check the, you know, check to make sure the material is still fissionable, like make sure stuff's still working. Like, or, or you just what? have to have new ones available. You have a two year life cycle, then it's dead. You got to throw another one up there. You get it ready. All you gotta, you gotta, you we have to use. launch a new one into space <laughs> every use. two years. Every two yeah. years. Yeah. Every two years. Yeah. It's a single um, use. Yeah. Use it. It's gone. It's burnt out. It's okay. toast. Dur- and you just eject looking, the Duracell into space. Yeah. yeah. When I was looking at uh, when I was looking China at China just ejects shit into space all the time. Get rid of it. Throw it yeah, up there. It's gone. Let it blow up. Falls down somewhere. But I was looking. I was looking into some of the potential, like the prototype projects we have, and there's like, I can't remember what it's called exactly, but pretty much a satellite solar array that beams energy down to a ground based receiver yeah. instead of using generators at like forward operating bases and stuff. If you're in a conflict or whatever, you shoot the energy from space, yeah. you receive it on the ground, and then you use it there instead of running diesel generators or anything. Yeah. So that is being developed. But that's a, like there's not enough energy in a direct beam to cause like devastation. Yeah. It's like a continuous power supply down yeah. to the ground, which is fuck, which is in itself is actually unless, unless cool. you make a huge like and die another day, and it's the Icarus project, and it's like it's just like giant lasers shooting down airplanes and shit. <laughs> and, then, and then you need and then James what, Bond to stop it. Like that's the only dude, way I, ran, I ran into a people saying like, "What did we just launch into space last year? The James Webb Telescope." It's a gold-plated mirror array. Like, oh yeah, and I was like, "What are you talking? This thing's fu- that thing is like six hundred thousand kilometers from Earth, isn't it? Like it's way out far. Yeah, it's way out there. It's like even if you, there. even if you're gonna put this laser like in low Earth orbit, where it's probably would be you. Number one, you could still see it. Like it's, if you could see the ISS, like you could see the ISS moving. This thing's big like enough. You'd, to be able to, you'd be able to space. see it like with the naked eye, and if it's big enough to shoot what a laser, are, what are those? What are those points in space just far enough from Earth that they're not affected? The, the Lagrange but points, the, those the are Lagrange way points. out there. Yeah, <laughs> those are even. But if farther. you were going to develop this kind of, I'm just saying hypothetically, you have no idea how how what they're it, capable of at this point, you, though. They've been developing this technology for so fucking that's long. A good point. Yeah. yeah. Well, no like clue. I said, like before, like oh, well, then they could just this, be anything. This guy's well, device, <laughs> the, the, this pyro. You have no clue. Well, well, like I said, this guy's device in uh, what would I say? The pyro. The pyro well, these could just run forest? on chaos energy. Stolen, they just draw right? power from the warp. I don't know. Like, yeah, they could just be anything. Fa- fa- <laughs> they've been developing this shit since the fucking. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't that make I, more okay, sense based. Like, I'm sorry. Okay, we should have we should have qualified this. Been like based on what we do know about lasers. What we know about lasers. What's the logi- what are the logistical What's challenges? Available? Not the, yeah. that they could be anything possible. From it's true. Anything, and, I agree with Andrew. You could go this way. Where in what was it? 1995, when they said, "Guess what." Uh, yeah, we got this plane called the Blackbird. It can fly 85,000 feet. It's invisible to radar, and it can take detailed pictures of something at the ground. We've had that for a while. So now we're in 2023. What did we have 20 years ago? Is that is that is that coming out now? What do they have? What is it 20 years advanced from now? Like what the what is allowed to leak? Yeah. 
Well, we we subscribe, or we, I don't want to say we, a lot of people subscribe to the fucking Tic Tac and shit like that being our own technology being tested and us not knowing, you know, nobody can comprehend what it is because that's te- technology we, we have not no gonna idea know about that for 20 it years. exists. Super yeah. advanced so with this, we've been developing this shit for even longer than that, so who knows? It's true. Right? It's true. Uh, from, yeah, I mean, but from what we know and what this, it, what seems to be possible with what we know, having a laser that powerful from, from space would be a massive project. Huge, huge undertaking. Yeah. Not in, just the yeah, just the it. physical limitations. Not even that. Just of lasers in general. Like if it is a laser, like it's still subject to like atmospheric interference. Like you would still have to be like, hope that it's a clear day that I want to start this fire. <laughs> and it's yeah, just like what, yeah, uh, getting it through the atmosphere would be a whole big problem. Plus, you'd probably so you also have, see it. Like, you have <laughs> to go back to a if it's a military operation, having it on a ship that doesn't come to port very often. That makes more sense to if say there was some advanced laser. It's on some sh- one ship that everyone signed to some NDA for the next 25 or 50 years or whatever it is. It's on that ship and it's on that ship alone. Buddy, what about, bo- okay. what about even ship. though, like, does it have to be that huge that it couldn't be on some sort of high altitude, like high well, altitude flight that just takes off, goes, fires on a target and then just keeps going? Well, the energy. Well, well, I guess if you're just using it to start fires, no, because you can start a fire with pretty much anything. You could do it with a drone. Yeah. Like you could do it with yeah. a drone. You could start you a fire it. with smashing rocks together. If it's yeah. Dry. Also, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> like for real, if it's if it hasn't rained yeah. in three months and you go to the woods, doesn't take much. And you have, I mean, <laughs> you have a you have a fucking quad that backfires in the dirt and it hits the, some fucking grass. You started a forest fire. Yeah, you could have a you could have a lock you could have a Lockheed Martin or a Black Rock employee go out there and smoke a cigarette and throw it out there and start a fire. Oh, buddy, it's true. I seen a video. I seen a video. I seen a video of these people. This like these workers working on a pool of these like these rich people's house, and it's like middle of the day. This guy's smoking a cigarette in his break, throws the cigarette in the bush, and then at three in the morning, three in the morning. (laughs) <laughs> like later like so he that's like at noon at three in the morning that bush just ignites into a or fucking you, or you could just fire. unload a big pile of mulch because mulch catches on fire all the time like you just unload a big hey. pile of mulch somewhere and be like oh yeah. mulch fire you could, yeah you could, you could dump a pile of mulch and let it let it fucking fester for a month and it's going to explode and light the forest would be the wiser that's so yeah way like, cheaper. As far as starting way starting cheaper fires does not take a lot of energy yeah. right so yeah. if you're just using this laser and its only application is to start a fire, it seems like overkill. I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> there's a, there's a handheld device that could just do it, like a fucking laser. Yeah, I'm sure. Wait, are you is. talking about like a flamethrower or not a flamethrower? Yeah. Or a flamethrower, not a flamethrower. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of devices that could easily uh, and quietly start a fire. No problem. But all, yeah, all these directed energy weapons we're talking about that are being developed for military applications are for like blasting <laughs> metal <laughs> rockets out of the sky, like. So I, you need more energy to blow up, to get through the casing and do all that. But if you're just trying to start a fire, yeah, it doesn't take much. So if, if you're, if you don't want boots on the ground, and yeah, you have some fucking drone that has some type of laser, I don't see why that that's not out of the realm of possibility that you could light a fire with a laser from yeah, thirty thousand high feet, altitude. Because like you like you as you fly by, you could have it directional where you're like, you have some sort of like high powered UV laser that just fixes on a point. And you just fly by, and well, as you're UV, flying I don't by, think UV is right for starting fires. But I'm just saying, I, I, listen, I'm not a fucking laser guy. Okay, I thought right. I fucking made that pretty clear. Okay, I don't fucking. You don't. I don't know. You're you not said an you expert. You own two different. You got a yeah. laser I, pointer I, and a I, green I, one. Sorry, I am a laser guy. Pretty sure you're a <laughs> self-proclaimed laser guy. Listen, Dan burned me with a purple laser one time, and that's all I know. Purple lasers burn. That's all I know. Right. So if they're flying by high altitude with a purple laser. Right, and they're just fixing it on a spot as they're flying over the horizon, like horizon, just fixing it on a spot. And it's like, well, and then maybe something starts smoldering, and they just leave, right? And it's like maybe that starts a forest fire. Like, if you just think about it in the context of like, we know the climate is getting hotter, we know where the Earth is getting warmer, things are getting drier. Is it not in a really easy Certain way areas. to cause fucking just chaos in a country than to just start a fucking forest fire? Like it causes so much fucking chaos, right? Like unbelievable yeah. amounts. But the crazy thing about the Lahaina fire is that as, as far as like forest fires, like hectares or like square kilometers or something is a tiny fire. It was really yeah. small, but be, just because the, 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 where it started, the winds, how they're blowing and the concentration of people in that area, it just was like the perfect storm of just destruction. Like, so, I so. mean, 
I know we're trying to make the point that it's like it would cause chaos, but like relatively it doesn't like it's on the on the larger scale, like the United States. It's like it doesn't really stop anything from working. It doesn't stop like infrastructure. It doesn't stop like very, production. Very rare. It doesn't stop yeah, it's rare. anything really uh, from the it doesn't stop the world turning for the United States or anything. No, it's just, uh, you, it's just you, like take- and it's mostly the state like the state has to respond to it. So it's going to be them. But also like California can do it because like the, the fucking fourth largest economy in the fucking world. <laughs> <laughs> like they can do it plus also they get federal assistance but i mean it's like that's i mean those funds are uh you know are earmarked for those kinds of disasters so it's like i mean yeah like i get i get that people are like you know this is something that could be used against other countries or stuff like that but it's really hard to kind of to kind of follow that it, reasoning to be okay you can use a directed energy weapon to light a energy that cannot be directed you know what i mean yeah. Like yeah, in yeah, Canada, in Canada this year, if you took all the forest that was burned, it's like the size of a country. It's like two Portugals or something. It's like a big chunk of land, but relatively it did little structural damage. If you take all the fires that were burning, yeah, you you can you could go isolate a handful, like the Kelowna one, uh, North uh, Shoe Slopper, and there's a couple in Quebec that did some damage. But for the most part, they just burned through the woods like well, they and- normally do, and they evol- come end of september early october they're going to put themselves out it's going to snow well, and in a hundred years if you were to come back and you didn't know there's a fire there you wouldn't even you know there was one there like you'll come well, back uh, and the forest has regrown the uh the 15 minute the sorry the the north shoe swap fire too that i'm glad you brought that up i kind of forgot about that that one's been popping off online and stuff with con- right-wing conspiracy groups and various conspiracy groups because like no one lives you there. know no one lives there and that's the, exactly and they're, they're like there's videos of them turning hydrants and then being like the fucking hydrants not working they fucking turned off our water and they turned off our ability to fight these fires when in reality those hydrants there are fed from a water tower that has already been drained by everyone fighting fires and there's no more water in their reservoir that's way up the hill yeah. that gets Used. They're not pumping from yeah. a natural source. They're pumping from a predetermined amount. Yeah, from a tower. And like, and then it goes, oh, they f- turn it off for these fucking 15 minute cities. It's like, no one wants to live in the shoe swap, anyways. It's a great <laughs> maybe, summer place. Maybe if you had a high speed rail, people would live there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's like people would get, people would move I there just, because it would take 15 Canada, minutes to you get You could burn all the forest in the world, like all the first, all the forest in Canada, and we're never going to build a high speed rail ever. Because Listen, I just we have too much population over too big a distance. It would cost the it would cost to be astronomical. We would never do it. It is never going to happen. And the Ever. thing the thing with these like directed energy weapons that like really, really affects like where I think I'm like, okay, well, like if you think about the most famous use of like where people are point to directed energy weapons, like nine eleven, you know, Dr. Judy would be in like these things were eviscerated and she she makes some interesting points. But I'm like, if that was that's a different used, tech, though. Yeah, if that's a different tech, but even then, even then, even that, if that's used in 2001, I'm like, I think we would see other examples of this kind of fucking destruction anywhere else if that was the thing being used as some sort of space based directed energy. Because it's not like there's not enemies foreign and afar, you know, where these things could not be used on now or in the last. <laughs> You know, 20, yeah, but you, when you think years. of the 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 military industrial complex, like that's that's a fr- that's that's an industry. They make money off these wars. You wouldn't want to yeah. just inviscerate your fucking enemies because then you're not going to be fucking making any money. That makes sense. You yeah, want to create enough chaos that it lingers for twenty years, then you pull out Absolutely. tragically in a terrible way, and then start <laughs> one somewhere else. Yeah, start a new one. Yeah. Start yeah, a new yeah. one, or proxy one somewhere else. With, spend a lot of money on it. Spend a lot of weapons. I'd, as it's, they do. it's i mean it's it's such an it's such an interesting one to talk about because like to me the interesting aspect to me is some of these ancient these ancient or historical like evidence of kind of directed injury weapons and then like like zell said like what do we have now like if they're working on it and we don't know what the military is up to and we're 20 years behind like what do they have now uh, that kind of intrigues me but as far as like are they is our you know our own governments fucking blasting our own cities 
to pave way for these 15 minute cities which is like we haven't seen that just like you know dan said earlier like in these you know the, they were gonna round us all up in these fucking q fema camps we never saw that come to fruition these 15 minute cities are you know for the most part not coming to fruition like it's not there's none of this is not quickly at least yeah the the area the the places are still quite literally fucking smoldering like give us some time yeah let them put the fires out then we'll see about these 15 minute cities right and it's kind of interesting so it's i guess time will tell on these kind of things but it's like for me i just have a i have a really hard time getting past you know, when you watch some of these people that really believe these are like targeted events and I can see why I can see, I can see the avenues of why they believe and they believe they follow some of the money of like BlackRock and Vanguard and, and some of these interests. And, you know, you have the people saying, I can see why, but I just, I just don't understand. I'm like, I feel like it would be used elsewhere as well. Like I just, Unfortunately, I do believe that, like you know, like Zell said, these no crisis goes to waste, and these fucking money managers are just oh, they're like they're on in. it, man. They're ruthless, oh, yeah. and that's Big why time. they're they they you know they're these huge conglomerates of money is because they they waste no opportunity, and they you know carpe diem they seize the fucking day. Whenever anything happens, they're like, we're on it. Can we buy these properties to rebuild? Right, like. It, there's no, there's no doubt about it, and it's not a conspiracy. These companies, that is the company asset management they that's, want. Is that's their prerogative. That's how they they've evolved. That they are these yeah. apex, these e- economical apex predators. predators. Like that's what and they then, have. They yeah. evolved into, and we allowed them to do that. That's if, what they're designed yeah, if we to can't, do. <laughs> if we cannot draft like a government that can block the growth, like to a point, the growth of the corporation, then they're just going to grow forever until that's, the corporation is so powerful. Is more powerful than the government itself, and the corporation itself, or a conglomerate of them, becomes the government. The wor- yeah, new we're world there. order, we're baby. The strings, buddy. Yeah. Because the crazy thing about BlackRock was his name, Larry Fink. He's on the board of, of the World Economic Forum. He's the fucking guy. He's up there with the. He's all about that fifteen-minute cities, the uh, Great Reset. We have to do better. We have to do all this stuff, and he. He's in charge of trillions of dollars of this company that owns trillions and trillions of dollars of assets. And he's giving in, he's directing countries through this World Economic Forum. He's giving advice. Maybe he doesn't have direct influence, but he has indirect influence saying, this is how we're, we want to do, and this is what the future we want. And if, uh, and then people kind of come on board. There's like 135 countries saying, like, the new, the next century. What, what's the fucking thing? It's like a, the new century for the world is there's 135 countries united nations have joined on to fight climate change do all these other initiatives but at the very top economics makes it all go around and these companies that own all the assets are at the that board are pulling the strings advice. man they're pulling the strings for sure and that's all right. so until you can limit that corporation's growth to a point where it's like okay you've already have 10 trillion dollars the, your dividends will be this now and or rather going to break you up like standard oil or like we're, if we do because right now they're operating under the rule that we've made like the yeah. our governments are like you can just yeah you fucking do it go for it and they yeah. do it and they employ tons of people and they make tons of jobs well and, and they, get, wealth. Become, they, they also manage everybody's 401ks like like 50 50 of the s p index mm. these companies they own like 50 yeah. of the entire fucking market right and they start Insane. to get and the crazy thing is, is like as of it, they get more powerful and, and and quicker and quicker, right? Like exponentially as they kind of consume these assets, and must it's, get a, bigger. it's it's a it's must a get yeah, and that's the that's the thing must get bigger, right? Like that's a scary thought. It's like that's and you know we've talked about it a, a couple times this last couple of weeks of like we've created these beasts and now we're like, we can't be upset about the things we've created because like, Oh, we can be, we can absolutely 100% be upset upset about it. (laughs) We need to do something to to stop these things. Eat the rich. Let's go. That's not going to fix it. it (laughs) Eat them. Purge. That's how that works. Larry Fink's a pretty fat guy. I mean, he probably tastes pretty good. Nice roast. Well, that's crazy. It's crazy to me that someone who's on the board of can like direct other countries, and because he's directing other countries on economic issues that would directly benefit his, the 
the like allow him to buy more asset. Yeah. yeah, which would allow BlackRock to right. get bigger, right? It's like so it's it, it's very very crazy. Like that, like that side, like the direct of energy weapons is interesting in the fact that we are developing them and they do exist and we are implementing them and we've talked about it before like the Havana syndrome where they use like directed like sound weapons like make people feel sick and like so we, like, we can use sound frequencies or energy frequencies to as weapons in a way but like it, just like anything there comes a point where like there's a diminishing return in the amount of energy needed to make it fucking actually like scale boom. to scale yeah. it up is insane so if you're going to use a fucking space laser to blow up a city it'd have to be the size of a city so like it's just not yeah, it's even like a it's projecting it. heat is something, but like you can project like um, radio frequencies. I mean, that is what radio is, is projected energy. Um, yep. But you can like, because they have some that like with like, uh, I remember the one they had like the riot control concept, where it's basically that if you had like a, a high frequency um, array that you would direct at people and it would microwave, it would boil off the moisture like on their skin. skin so it feel like you're feel burning. Like, burning. Like, yeah, you feel yeah. like you're burning and it would, you know, as a deterrent. Uh, instead of feel like you're burning feels like you're like you need to itch like you have to scratch your skin and i mean that as far as like crowd disbursement technology that yeah you're not not making anybody spontaneously pull it a respirator and they can stay there but you fucking shoot them with that thing it's over but they're not spontaneously combusting or anything (laughs) no you're not burning them up but (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. you turn up the dial turn it to 11 then they're fucking combusting well, I mean, uh, in the in the in that sense, though, if it's like if it's short range, high energy, yes, I'm sure you could get to a point where you could probably just blow people up with this energy. But it's not. Is that useful? What's that useful for? <laughs> You're just gonna melt crowds, just yeah. start <laughs> their fucking limbs start exploding off. Well, when Gross. we start uprising to eat the rich, eat the rich, yeah, they start blasting us with that direct they're energy. They're gonna turn us into goop. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they just use guns. I don't know. <laughs> Bullet, <laughs> bullets seem way taking much away cheaper. our guns. Yeah. Well, All right. So, what you heard it here, we have to invest in our own counter directed energy technology. <laughs> so, when yeah. the government starts shooting us with directed energy, we can shoot back. And you might be so asking, yeah. you might be cells. asking, you might be asking, how can I contribute to, you know, the people's directed energy weapon? And we have a solution patreon.com slash alien theorist podcast. <laughs> uh, donate to us, and a portion of all proceeds will go to our own uh, research in directed energy weapons that we can counter, counter directed energy weapons uh, so we can fight mm-hmm. uh, the current directed energy yeah. weapons. So, uh, listen, because it do, right? Let's, we're, dude, D E W D, directed energy weapon defense. Yeah. yeah. That's dude. What we're, dude. Yeah. yeah. Dude. Yeah. We're developing dude. Right. Donate to dude. Donate to dude. <laughs> Uh, at patreon.com slash basically they're ba- ba- i mean our working concept <laughs> right now we have a working prototype it's basically an umbrella with a bunch of mirrors on it but yeah, yeah. it's pretty it's a pretty blue good. umbrella with a bunch of mirrors <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be specific specific blue though or it's not gonna be specific yeah. shade of blue. Um, somehow deflects all heat and just this you. this week we got a theory of the week send a nice five-star review uh, it's Ooh. an easy way Easiest easy way, way to nice. get a theory of the week Write a thoughtful. If you if it's really short, you're probably not getting it. Right, just write. You know, if right you're feeling enough. it, write a five star review. You probably get your theory of the week. Pretty easy. Um, five star review from J Dalton eighteen. Uh, five star brought out the brought out my inner theorist. Uh, I listen to you guys at work every day. I binged every episode back to back to back, and have just now caught up. You guys have made me question my own opinions on certain matters and help me develop a new one. Every single episode is like a new adventure, learning about pickle babies and Braden's foot fungus. Please keep the shows coming and keep my work days interesting. That's from Jay Dalton, 18. Nice. Um, yeah, don't pull out your inner, inner theorist at work. You'll get, you might get arrested. Oh, that might be a, that might be a big day for that guy. Is that the same don't guy who won boss. a t-shirt from our, our live last night? I think really? it might Was be. It? I think it that's might be. Dope. Let me just it check. Was. Let me just check the yeah. Gmail here. If that's him. Um. No, Jay Helms. Sorry, mm, different guy. Not quite. Close. Not quite. Uh, not Jay Dalton, close. eighteen from United States. Uh, thank you for that five star review. We really appreciate it. Fuck yeah! As Brayden said, you got to ho- head over to alientheorist.com, hit the Patreon or Supercast tab, and get your fucking name read on the show pretty much sponsoring the episode if you're right at the end here that's pretty much what you're doing 
helping the helping the show grow, helping to keep the lights on. We appreciate it. This week we have Joseph the Whiskey Man, Cashawin Masalf, Carrie B, Steve Will, Invalid ID, <laughs> Invalid ID, <laughs> kick him out. Steve Jones. N. Maybe I copied that wrong. <laughs> Jones N. Chip Medine and Gilbert Leary. Thank you very much for supporting the show. We appreciate it. Uh, and before, normally I just sign up right now, but again, what we've been saying, question everything. You know, you should question the official narrative, and then you should question what people are telling you is the alternative. Question everything. Question. Uh, as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies and question everything. Um, Fuck, I got to pee. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Holy, I gotta, I'm going to go launch a pee off the We're gonna launch side of before a, after hours here. I'm going to launch a pee in the pee tree. And We're still live, right? Oh, yeah, yeah we're, still we're still alive. alive. Dan, don't take off your pants like you normally do. Yep. Let me go on my extremely racist tirade now. Everybody's gone. I guess it's just me now. Uh, they said it's in chat. They said that there were, we're streaming on YouTube. I can't find it. So I can't see chat to interact with everybody right now, which would be really fun. Um, but everybody's here. Uh, they say question everything. Please don't question the warning labels on certain products. Uh, you know, chemical, uh, stuff like that. Don't, don't question those things. Those are probably things you would want to take heed of. Uh, yeah. Uh, also maintenance maintenance requirements on some things so that'd be nice uh let's see here uh, i can't really i think it's super bizarre that i can't find you guys on chat otherwise i'd be interacting with you guys um let's see here oh that's right do we have the that's right. It's. Oh, I thought they posted. Oh, it's on the Patreon page. Yeah, I was saying. Oh, it's on the Patreon. All page. right, Dan, give That's us uh, give us some it. Jewish space laser stuff. Come on. <laughs> I am on the what are you thing. talking about? <laughs> You're uh, so good, dude. Oh, well, it's after hours, so I guess yeah. yeah. So Braden and I were uh, we were discussing the. <laughs> 
we were discussing plausibility, that. The plausibility. What we couldn't talk the, about was that the Jews control all the space lasers, and that's why we yeah. we had to yeah. tiptoe around the true conspiracy. Uh, but yeah, we we tried to uh, we tried to figure out what exactly uh, we tried to visualize what a Jewish space program <laughs> might look like. Uh, you know, because like we mentioned, it's like these things take maintenance and stuff, and you'd say, "Oh, 